Okay, so today we look out in the universe around us and we see other big collections of stars like our own Milky Way with lots and lots of empty space between them. And so we want to know how that came to be. And our first best guess was cold dark matter. And one reason for that is that the, the micro background, that cosmic relic radiation field from the hot Big Bang, that's a sort of a baby picture of the universe. And it had no structure to speak of. So we see this rich amount of structure today. The early universe is observed to be extremely uniform. And the question arises, how do you get here from there? The idea of cold dark matter was to take that very smooth early condition of the universe and give something extra to make the structure grow. We do see tiny density fluctuations in that early radiation field. And so gravity will take those things and make the rich get richer. So something that starts out with a little extra density will become more and more dense. And the idea is that eventually becomes a galaxy. The problem is that gravity, as taught to us by Newton and Einstein, is not strong enough to get here from there. You can't get here from there. And so you need something to goose the process, so some, some extra something. And so the idea was that we would add in this cold, dark matter, stuff that didn't interact with the photons, and then it could grow without leaving too much of a scar on the microwave background. And so that was one of the reasons that we, we invented this stuff in the first place. And that's been a very successful theory. It, it shows how you can get here with lots of structure from there way back when with very little structure. We're talking now about the data that you examined from Webb and what you found were not fragments or building blocks. You didn't find those the numbers that you expected to. That's correct. So basically what, what we had before the Webb observations was very smooth starting point, very lumpy finishing point. And what Lambda CDM predicted was that you had to boil up very slowly and gradually. And that's what makes these protogalactic fragments. And it is the hierarchical merging of these things, little things merging to form bigger things, merging to still form bigger things that are supposed to form the galaxies that we see today. That's what we're not seeing. We expected uh, that there would be lots and lots of small proto-galaxies. Uh, and instead, what we're seeing is a surprising number of what looked like God just said, here's a galaxy. Here's a galaxy. <laughs> there, there are big <laughs> island universes already in place at very early times, bigger than they should have been in, in this standard theory. So in the paper, you and the team make an argument that what you're seeing is supported by an alternate theory of cosmological formation, which is modified Newtonian dynamics, right? Correct. That's right. Yeah. What the heck is that? What the heck indeed. <laughs> this is where we're challenging deeper theory. So instead of dark matter, we've changed the force law of gravity. It's stronger now. We've invented the cold dark matter to speed up the formation process. We invented MON for the same kinds of reasons, to give more force, but it's a different invention, so you have to see how they behave. And if you simply ask, okay, here's some region of the early universe that's expanding, but it's obeying this modified force law, how long does it take to collapse and form a galaxy-sized object? And the answer is about half a billion years. And that's what Webb is seeing, that there are things that already seem to have formed that big, that fast. So this doesn't confirm MOND, but it adds support to that yeah. particular that particular model. Yeah, it's the prior, right? You, you want to make your predictions before the observation. And, and in Lambda CDM, we had a clear prediction, and it was that we should have all these little protogalactic fragments. In MOND, we had a prediction that the galaxies would get big fast. That's what we're seeing. It depends on how you weigh the different lines of evidence. You know, if here are these two incommensurate things that we've observed, and if you put all your weight on, oh, I only care about large scale structure, it's like, okay, well, lambda CDM is the right answer. If you care about the details of dynamics and how galaxies actually work and how they could possibly form this early, oh, well, then MOND is a better theory. And we haven't figured out how to make those things mesh.